Cornwall hasn't really got excited since the Armada. It's famed now for its holiday resorts, its gentle climate and its rugged rugby players. But not for soccer. Teams like Falmouth Town are resigned to being one of football's footnotes. There are times when it can get very lonely. You've either got to be very good or very lucky or a mixture of both really. Um, I think we're so far removed from, from anywhere. I mean, Plymouth is the nearest club, which is around about 64, 65 miles away. And um, I suppose they, they come down and watch you, as do most clubs, but not, not anywhere like uh, in London or the Midlands or something. It's just impossible. Uh, tell me about your manager. He's a retired uh, policeman, an ex-army PTI, so that might give you some indication of the sort of uh, bloke he is. Have the preparations been any different? Um, we always prepare well. Uh, the team will be going up on a coach tomorrow. We'll stop off at a hotel and while the supporters and, and wives and family go in the bar and have a drink. We'll be in sitting down listening to a team talk that could last an hour. We'll know their team inside out by the time uh, the game starts. We'll find when the number three is taking the corner. Viney, number six, and Kirkup, number 11, will come to the near post on the edge of the six-yard box. Viney, Kirkup. That's only me watching them in 90 minutes. And I also had them clocked against Exmouth last Monday, as you know, with Bob Davis. While preparations for a wedding reception began outside, Falmouth's briefing about Torrington, their preliminary round opponents, continued inside. Uh, when it went up, in particular with Keith Finey, if there was a, a shot outside the box, with Keith Finey, if he wasn't... By the end, Falmouth's players knew just about everything there was to know about Keith Viney, except perhaps his collar size. Um, we do this even if it's a domestic game. I think you want to have success, you've got to do your homework. So we're well prepared, and um, perhaps some of you may have heard the team talk we just had, and... Uh, I know that's in theory, and just hope the lads can now put it into practice. When Falmouth arrived at Torrington's Vicarage Field, they learned something about Keith Viney they didn't know. He'd been injured and wasn't playing. Torrington are in green. Washington's manager is John Hoare. Five years ago, he took Plymouth Argyle to the semi-final. While he talked to his team after a goalless first half, the crowd were treated to an interval display of ball skill. In the second half, Falmouth took the lead. A goal for Darren Northcott. But a mistake by Tommy Matthews let in Torrington sub Kevin Pitts for an equaliser. George Torrance, once of Brentford, led Falmouth out for the replay. Viney was in the Torrington side this time, but this was the night the dossier paid off. 4-2 to Falmouth. It wasn't quite the sinking of the Armada, but beating Devonshire invaders left Cornwall quietly for content. Falmouth's next game, at home to Cornish neighbours St Blasey, John Cousins came down to watch his son Mark. John was once a pro with Peterborough and had his moment of FA Cup glory at Old Trafford. Peter Eustace. It's Cousins and Greenhoff. And Cousins loose. Two up. Here in the first qualifying round, the crowd was undeniably smaller. But when Falmouth took the lead, the finish by Mark Cousins wouldn't have been bettered by Dad in his prime. John, there are a lot of cup ties being played this afternoon, but there won't be many better goals scored than that one. No, it was a good goal. It's uh, particularly from Mark's head. It's very unusual. He doesn't score that many these days. How much is he the player you brought on, and how much is, is he his own man? Oh, he's definitely his own man. I told him. Um, he wouldn't do half the things he does out there if I had my way. <laughs> he's a very, very laid-back sort of player and plays when he gets the ball. And he's excited when he gets the ball, but he's, some other parts of his game need serious questions. Okay. Being asked. Questions were provoked by St Blaise's equaliser. What was Jerry Collins trying to do when this one went in-off past his own goalkeeper? Not much doubt who'd be asking the questions. The latter stages were played in a downpour, but neither side leaked any more goals. Before the replay, 
Dave Wadd showed me how he relaxes away from it all. Relaxes? It was an experience that provided more food for thought than fish for the pan. Well, I think we've only caught about four sharks this season. So we'll be lucky today if we catch anything. What are these conditions like? I suppose it's about average conditions, really. Glad I'm not out with you on a bad day, then. Well, that's true. That's true. You could have a good meal before, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> the sharks had more sense than we did. They didn't show up. So back to business, to St Blasey. The home side had a goalkeeping problem. Stuart Dent, injured in the first game, failed a fitness test. And this is a club that knows about keepers. Nigel Martin played here at the start of a career that this week saw his record-breaking transfer to Crystal Palace and his first England B game. Against Falmouth, Ian Morris was called up from St Blasey reserves and played with style, confidence and mature judgment. Sadly for Falmouth, their goalkeeper made a wrong decision about when to go walkabout. He was stranded on the touchline when Mark Damarell crashed in a shot that would have tested him if he'd been at home. Hill settled the tie. It was more than Dave Wadd could bear, but when his opinion the town could bear, before the next game, club and manager parted company. The second qualifying round of the competition sent Anik to Barrow, 